But but recently, in updating that work, you were challenged uh, by a peer reviewer um, to yes. Uh, yes to uh, we'll, we'll go into that in a second. But a peer reviewer challenged you in a certain way that led you to discover something much more. And and right now, y your data is suggesting that you've got um, thousands. Of such or hundreds of thousands, hundreds or hundreds of thousands, a really remarkably yes. high number of transients appearing in what's called the um, uh, in, in plates from I think it's called the Polymore uh, Observatory um, uh, Sky Survey uh, from the 1950s, and so these are again pre-Sputnik era um, uh, plates which um, show that uh, uh, there may be something in orbit of the mm. Earth at that time, um, and and you've got a remarkably uh, high uh, uh, sigma on the results, um, much much higher than than high confidence data would be. So so tell us how you you know what what you're seeing in this data, so, and yeah. So this was like um, so we we had already found some candidates where we so we we uh, looked back at this test that i mentioned where we were looking for aligned things uh, like alignments or things that are in a narrow band because you could have i mean something could be in a narrow band or alignments either because it's kind of uh tumbling in space let's say at a, um, when it's in orbit and then sometimes you will have glints or like solar reflections or it could be that you have something that is in a formation. So we were looking for these things. And um, the paper is focusing, however, on the solar reflection hypothesis more. And uh, so then the referee said, OK, but you, you really need to prove that it is solar reflections. So if that's true, then you're go going to have a deficit or that they vanish in the Earth's shadow. Because of course, if something is in the Earth's shadow, you're not going to get solar reflections there. And if you had glints due to solar reflections, you're not going to have them there. So you can expect a deficit. So, and I was thinking, how do I do this? Because now our best candidate, actually from the alignment test, uh, is a candidate that has a quite unusual alignment. You see five objects in a narrow band and the probability for that, for like, um, uh, for that alignment is something like one in 10,000. And for a weird coincidence, it happened on the Washington DC flap in 1952, 27th of July. And for and, and ju just so people understand what you mean, yeah. you mean the uh, these were events in 1952, July of 1952, where over two weekends uh, there were there were many uh, UAP sightings, um, both at the. Uh, taking place uh, yeah. uh, at the Washington National Airport. Um, there were military observations at the time, and it really mm -hmm. created quite a uh, controversy where the, the Air Force had to address it. Exactly. And for whatever reason, our best candidates were from those dates. Um, and actually two different sets, but one is an alignment, another is a triple transient that was discovered in a high confidence data set, very carefully selected. And by my colleague Enrique Solano. So one starts wondering, like, oh my God, is there a coincidence or is there a correlation? Anyway, so um, so I was thinking, like, how do we test this with the Umbra when we just have a handful of candidates? Because I was always thinking of our candidates like just a handful of them. But then I thought, okay, so let me use actually this entire data set Enrique sent me. And we have 106,000 uh, like transients there. Many of them we think are just probably plate defects that are like this sample hasn't been uh, visually inspected. So many of them might be just false positives. And some of them we believe might be real. Of course, we want to find the real ones. So that's why we're looking for these alignments. Anyway, so we run this test and try to check how many of them are in the Earth's shadow. And we find a remarkable deficit when you just if, if you just take the raw data, not raw data, the, the raw test and you uh, um, look how many are in the shadow and how many you expect in the shadow, you land at an under density that is significant at the 22 sigma level. And that's something I mean, it's a bigger chance that you get eaten by a black hole tomorrow than that you land on that value by chance. 
You can also do it much more re refined by comparing which plates were actually exposed and at what time, and you look at uh, the same transients and you still arrive at an almost eight sigma result, which again is extremely low probability to happen by chance. And, um, and then you start like really wondering like, oh my God, the, so the deficiency we see is like one third of the sample seems to be missing in the Earth's shadow. And that's a big number. That's yeah, a big it's a, number. It's a, it's a remarkable number. And, and so is the probability of, of um, you know, your, your uh, provisional conclusions about this being correct. Mm -hmm.